Hit the record, do your thing. And now a message from our friends at Fetching Food. The 1970s and 80s had elbow, gravy train, perina, meow mix, and bell bottoms. You've changed your clothes, now change how you feed your pet. Like bell bottoms, kick the kibble and join us in the 21st century with the healthiest diet for dogs and cats. Feed naturally, feed raw, feed fetching foods. Just 45 minutes from the bright new year of 1958. To make what's left of this year and all of next year bright for you, presents... Guy Lombardo and his Royal Canadians, direct from the world-famous Grill Room of the Roosevelt Hotel at 45th Street and Madison Avenue here in New York City. And now, here is Mr. New Year's Eve himself. Welcome to the final episode of 2018. I'm your host, Chris Green, and our guest needs no introduction. Somebody that I honestly feel is an amazing lady Somebody I am very fortunate that I get to talk to on a constant basis. And somebody that I really honestly could say is the perfect person to end 2018. And that is my good friend, Dr. Lori Kojer. I can honestly say she is the most intelligent veterinarian that I am grateful to be able to talk to. And somebody that I go to even for my own questions and I do bother her quite a lot. I do apologize for that. Um, but with that said, um, I felt that she was the perfect addition to our last episode of the podcast for 2018. And um, I hope to have more really interesting news starting 2019. I am hoping it has become a very chaotic and crazy kind of uh, environment over this way. And um, well, We'll go into that a whole different episode, a whole different year, a whole different time. But before we go into that, let's go into a fun fact of the week. I didn't realize this, that dogs have about a hundred different facial expressions, most of them made with their ears. Dogs have about ten vocal sounds, dogs do not have an appendix, and there are more than 350 different breeds of dogs worldwide. Dalmatians are born spotless. At the first, at first they are pure white, and then the spots develop as age. You know what? I feel like that too. Isn't that so like a human for you? You know, we're born where we're spotless, and then all of a sudden, as we get old, we have age spots. So it kind of feels the same way. So I, I think that uh, Dalmatians and humans have a lot in common in that way. Didn't realize that uh, the facial expressions were over a hundred, and of course. It's all connected to the ears, which I think my dogs have all kinds of weird expressions. Some days I feel like my dog has kind of that rock, the rock eyebrow lift, but just with an ear. I wonder how many of you guys go through that as well, where you can relate your dog or cat to some celebrity. I'm pretty sure you all have somebody in mind. <laughs> well, by that sound, our good friend Dr. Kojer is about to enter the podcast. So with that said, welcome Dr. Lori Kojer to the last episode of 2018. Those numbers are blazing forth on all four sides of the New York Times building. Times Square. The old year has died, and the great annual pressure event has happened. A new year has been born. Firecrackers exploding in the crowd now, but they don't care. A very happy scene, as well as a tumultuous one. So now it's time for us to say, it's Happy New Year in Times Square, and so back to the dance. Happy New Year! 
All right, this week on the podcast, well, I'm going to step off my soapbox as we get into this one, and I am going to turn the mic over to my very good friend and favorite person to talk to on a daily basis. I wish we actually did this daily because it'd be fun. We are rejoined to rejoin to rejoin by Dr. Lori Kojer. Thank you for doing this again. I really love talking to you. I love talking to you. It's 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 funny. I was just we always I, have a great time. Oh yeah. I mean, before we even start, I love having this little open dialect with with everybody listening. Before we actually start recording, uh, we're we're in the middle of all kinds of different conversations, and and I'm on the soapbox moment just a second ago. So I found that to be very funny. So <laughs> I couldn't really stop laughing, and I had to explain myself as I'm talking. So I'm like, there it is. Well. Yeah, there it is. I'm going to step off of mine, as I said, um, but catch us up and tell us what's been going on. Oh, what's been going on since the last time we talked? Um, I spoke at the Lucas and Baruby Healthy Pet Summit in October in Montclair, New Jersey, which was a blast. Um, unbelievable event hosted by Gregory and Mark of Lucas and Baruby. I spoke with Dr. Karen Becker. Dr. Judy Morgan, Dr. Jerry Bukoff, Dr. Melissa Shelton, who is the bomb when it comes to essential oil use in animals, and, uh, of course, Billy Hookman from mm-hmm. Answers, who was unbelievably amazing. Mm-hmm. He talked about fermentation, and he taught us how to brew our own kombucha, and he was it was just mind-boggling. The audience came from obviously a lot from the tri-state area, but we had people there from France, from Puerto Rico, from England, um, just an amazing audience. It was such a great time. International so audience right October. there. International audience. Nice. We were at Montclair, Montclair Film, which is a small theater, and it was really amazing because Meryl Streep will be there in a couple in a week or two. Like, okay, I'm standing on a stage where Meryl Streep will be, Stephen Colbert. There were pictures all around the the theater of people who had been there. It was just mind-boggling. I had such a great time. And I can't wait till next year's event, which will be, I think, I think it will also be in October. Um, So from there, I jumped into planning my own event, the Healthy Dog Expo, which takes place next April. And I'm thrilled to say I have the amazing Jean, Dr. Jean Dodds as my lead speaker, who needs no introduction when you talk about natural animal health, vaccine knowledge, hypothyroidism, you know, the originator of the first animal blood bank in the country. She's, she's been an amazing pioneer in natural veterinary care and animal health for, for decades. So that's pretty much, and, and of course, working at the office and doing my own thing. But that's where my energy has been focused the past couple months. You know, I'm going to say something I said a year ago. <laughs> and and again, <laughs> it's just always so fun to, to, to think back to different conversations. But I said, well, April's, you know, kind of a while away. And your response was, oh it'll be here before you know it. And, and I'm thinking, well, it that's will. April. We got, what are you talking about? Five months, six months? And it was. It's, that, it's <laughs> less than six months. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's a little scary. Um, so I'm in the midst of, you know, working with sponsors, working with gift bag donors, making sure my speakers have what we need. Um, I changed venues. So I have, um, the amazing Desmond Hotel, which has this beautiful indoor courtyard. And last year we had snow at my expo, even though it wasn't April. So this year I said, I'm going someplace where it's going to be spring no matter what, even if I have to put it indoors. So we'll be we'll be in the courtyard and lecture halls and exhibit area. It'll be great. It you know I've seen some and, of the and you just and you just had one of my guests on one of my speakers on Dr. Kendra Pope. I did, I did. One of one of only three integrative oncologists in the country. And I don't know if she told you that there's only there's only three of them. I don't know if we actually went to that if that if that came up in topic if we talked about that on or off. Might have been off. She's really mm-hmm. modest, and 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 that's one of the yeah. things that's just so interesting. Your friends, yeah, and and I say this seriously. 
your friends are all rock stars in this industry, which I'm, I'm guessing your photo went up in that theater because of course, you know, since you mentioned such <laughs> big names and, and you know, it's another thing that's funny. It's, we were talking about this. Wow. Right after, after you, you got done doing that, I'm like, so is it Dr. Becker or do you just go by Karen at this point? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, she, an, she answers to a variety of names. Um, but I think with but, you and Susan, you know, it's Karen, right? Yeah. 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 Um, but, you know, it's just, and, and it's funny, you know, because my, um, my tech staff, some of them call me Dr. Kojar. I have one tech who happens to be one of my favorites. Uh, don't, if she's listening to this, I'll deny it. <laughs> but she calls me Kojar. She calls me by my last name. It's like, it's okay. It works for you. It's always said with respect. I don't mind it. Um, but no, I mean, these people and that I've been blessed to be introduced to, um, they're, they don't have a crazy ego Mm -hmm. because they're focused on the work because where their priorities are, and this was true of all of Gregory's speakers, where their priorities are is in making things better for the dogs and cats of the world. Mm -hmm. Um, And of course, you know, for many also they deal with pocket pets, wildlife, et cetera, but they don't have time for, you know, high school ego games. They're moving forward and working to do stuff better and to spread and share knowledge. Um, but so, the best, yeah, I mean, this is, this is who we are. The best never have an ego. That's just, that's just something I'm, I really have noticed. It's, it's, it's kind of funny. I mean, and again, I look at who, and a lot of them are because of you. Look who has been on and, and they're all the same, which I have to, I didn't even tell you this before we started recording. So I'm just going to, oh, yeah. I'll do this while we're recording. So okay. <laughs> a little behind the scenes. So you'll, you'll say, Hey, you really need to talk to you. And then so and so. And so I'll be like, okay, cool. So I'll, I'll have him on. And before we start recording, uh, I'll say, so did Dr. Kojer tell you anything to be expecting? And she's like, or he, whatever it is, will say, mm-hmm. no, no, just said, no, just go on and do this. And I'm like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know why it makes yeah. me laugh every time. Because they're like, I have no idea what to expect. <laughs> she just said, go and do it. Yeah. I'm like. Just go and do it, exactly. <laughs> um, it makes me yeah, laugh because, every time. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's just a conversation. That's like it. We were talking about earlier. You know, a lot of us, you know, in the natural health advo- uh, advocacy circle, if you will, you know, we're all about the same thing. So, you know, we naturally relate to each other well. And, you know, we may disagree on some things or another, but we're all pulling in the same direction. Mm-hmm. And that's what's going to get things changed. Mm-hmm in the pet world and you know i I always think of susan who you know really pushes the envelope and i know the dog food companies pet food companies don't like her and such um but she keeps she keeps moving forward and it's it's all about doing what's right for the pets and that's where we all have our commonality right and and honestly you know what's funny is that i I can honestly say, I don't think I disagree with what you guys say. And again, I always feel like the outsider in, in all of this, cause mm-hmm. I am, but I, I, I don't really disagree with anybody. I'll be like, oh, it's a bold, you know, decision to make or choice or even discussion, but mm-hmm. it's not a, oh, that's a, that's a poor idea. I don't like it. No, you right. guys are, you know, again, I, yeah. I get, I get and the luxury of this. Right. Yeah. You know, I might say I would pursue that case with chiropractic and low level laser and somebody else might say, I'll do acupuncture and earth. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. You know, both methods might work, many paths up the mountain. That's the kind of disagreement. Or, you know, I might use Chinese food theory and cook food, whereas I might use raw food and a more western or conventional uh, recipe, if you will. Just and minor differences. It, it is. It is so minor. And by the way, if anybody wonders what I call Dr. Kojer, 
it's always the same thing. <laughs> always, hi doctor. I don't, I, I can't, I can't call you anything else. It's, I've, I, I think I tried one time and it just didn't seem right. It was, it was like a discussion yeah. that, that Susan asked me a while back ago. She goes, so when you talk about, if you ever talk about me, which, you know, she's again, another modest person, she'll say, when you do right. mention me, I'm curious, how do you, how do you, you know, direct it? And I go, Susan Thixton. She goes, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And, and she told me a story that they were, God, you might have been there for this. Um, it was Susan, it was, Dr. Becker, Rodney, Dr. Royal, um, but they were in this room and, and I think it was Rodney who, who said that the only reason why he calls her Susan Thixton is because it sounds so strong and, and a superhero type sound. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I oh. was like, yeah, it makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, I, Rodney took an, an amazing amount of inspiration from Susan, I know. And, and Susan helped him. You know, so a, a synergistic relationship. But Susan, Susan Thixton has been behind a lot of us who are passionate about the food safety, the mm-hmm. medication or product safety. Um, I just, I admire the heck out of the woman. She's, she's amazing. She really is. And, and you know, it's, it's again, your, hey, oh, here's a word that's going to throw some people off, but your Rolodex is just loaded with these people. I mean, it's like Justice League meets the X-Men all combined into this <laughs> Avengers X-Men slash thing. I mean, it's, well, it's interesting. It's interesting, and you raise a good point. I mean, Rolodex, my God. <laughs> right. But, you know, I call it, I call it our circle. But yeah. our circle keeps expanding. And expanding in different layers, whether they're veterinarians or like Susan, consumer advocates, or like Gregory, you know, natural pet store owners. I have trainers in my circle, but we all, we all have a load of common beliefs. Mm -hmm. And we all have influence in little different niches, Mm -hmm. which is what we need to push change. Mm -hmm. Because we got to get that information into the, dog or cat owner's hands that says, hey, you might want to think about feeding something other than kibble to your pet. Mm -hmm. Or you might want to think about how you medically manage your pet or, you know, do fewer vaccines. And sometimes I don't reach those people, but the trainer does or the groomer does or the pet store does. So we need all of these people from different sectors of, I'll call it the pet industry, but it's it's the holistic, natural, alternative circle. That almost kind of has that strategic homeland, you know, the whole shield thing when it, yeah, kind of has that. We got to come up with something that's a little bit more abbreviated, but that would actually yeah. work. <laughs> Again, yeah. we're our own shield. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, exactly. it's interesting. It's, it, you're, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm very blessed and lucky to be able to, to follow what you're doing and be able to talk to you. Pretty much, it seems like a lot, which I, I honestly can say I'm, I'm very fortunate so in that just, area. You just need to do more podcasts. We can talk all the time. I know. I introduce you to more of my friends. Oh, gosh. You know, you know what's funny Not is. Not enough hours in the day. Oh, yeah. And, and I, I, I keep saying we're going to do a video that we'll just sit down a week and do some video, kind of like like Gregory does. I just don't even know where the where to start on time, but that's something that we're we're, we're right. still talking about that. Off topic again. Yeah, Here's that shiny yeah. red ball moment. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We really got to do that though. What? That's something that has to come up. Oh yeah. Well, and and videos just are becoming so universal, and I mean, it's great, but it's like it's great to do the podcast, and I love that. People can take a podcast and listen to it, you know, whatever else they're doing, Mm -hmm. whether they're walking their dog or driving to work or cleaning the house or what have you. But there's something about a video where you can actually show people stuff Uh that has its own magic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm still I'm I'm still a huge lover of radio. I still think radio is just. Yeah, you're doing radio now. 
Well, kind of behind. Yeah, yeah, kind of behind the scenes type. I mean, it's it's because of a lot of you that that really pushed me into it, and I'm not really doing what I want to do yet. But you know, if it but wasn't you're learning, yeah, I am, I am, and and it's nice to be behind the scenes and at least be in that area. But I would never have done it, and I think you might have been one of the first to be like, "Why aren't you?" And and the answer yeah. is, "Why would I?" I mean, who wants me yeah. to be part of it? Kind of thing, but. Yeah. But yeah, it is kind well, of. Well, but I'll tell you, and you'll, I don't know if you'll ever get an interview with this person, but there is a woman by the name of Amy Jo Martin, and she runs a podcast called Why Not Now, which <laughs> I think is brilliant. Um, she is one of the original social media experts, like back when social media was just getting started. She taught Shaquille O'Neal how to tweet. Mm-hmm. And. She is worth she is worth looking up. She's a New York Times best selling author. She's uh founded her own business and actually then closed it. A whole journey. And she has an Australian Shepherd, which is how we connected. Mm-hmm. Um but why not now is a great question to ask yourself when you're thinking about doing something. Mm-hmm. Whether it's feeding your dog raw or saying, hey, you know, I'd like to work at a radio station. Why not? It was you actually to, that. You have to be open to trying things. Well, you know, it's funny. You, you had mentioned her. Oh, gosh, I want to say it was sometime early this year. And you were talking about, you talked about her and you talked about, um, and I only know her as Captain Antoniel. I don't know any, I don't know her full name. Oh, Tony Antoniel. That's the one. There you go. And you another, said. Another, another Australian Shepherd person. Exactly. You you told me, you got to get them on the podcast. I did reach out to both yeah. of them. I, of course, yeah. I'm not surprised. They're both busy and both are going, who are you? Oh, they're both busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I did. I actually but, did reach out to her. You never know. You never know. Right. Right. Well, you know, it's, it's, you never know or why not now? And it's one of those, I mean, I right. walked in and I just said, Hey, you know what? Why not? And, and they kind of were like, okay, well, what, what, what do you want to do? And it's like, well, you know, <laughs> what I like to do, um, but in the end, at the end, yeah. But I'm willing, but I'm willing to take the steps to get there. And that's what I told him. I was like, I'm willing. I mean, it's it's and, a low end, but hey, who cares? A little bit's better than nothing. And and you know, that's the same journey someone takes towards natural dog health. Mm-hmm. It's one step at a time. You know, opening up your mind to the possibility of looking at another way of managing your dog's care, your dog's diet, your dog's health, learning a little bit, taking a step, learning a little bit more, taking a step. Making Um, a mistake here and there, but still moving forward. Yes. And, you know, I think in some ways if I could reach owners and say, hey, do this now before you hit a major health crisis Mm. when the pressure is on, like my people that come in with a dog in cancer and they're like, okay, I want to do everything alternative now. Like, great, I'll help you. But if I could could have planted this thought in your head a year ago, we would have been much farther ahead. So, you know, it, things are what they are, and people come to things when they come to things. Well, we, we've but come to if that. I could, if I could have my wish, it would be that I could expose every dog owner to, you know, just, you know, a 10% change in how you're doing things towards the more natural. So you became comfortable with it. And so your eyes were open to, oh, this isn't hard. It went okay, and it helped. Mm-hmm. And then you build from there. And it's that aha moment. How many times have we had that yes. conversation? The aha, there it is. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to put you in the spot that I love. I told you, I, I this Uh-oh. is my favorite Uh-oh. favorite thing. Yeah. So you've always had <laughs> you've always had the best answers and they're interchangeable. So you'll never get the same one twice and that's one of the reasons why I think that I should just call it the coder box. Um but <laughs> maybe I'm going to write that down. That's a good idea. But um I always love hearing what what's putting you on the soapbox at this moment. At this moment. <laughs> hmm. By the time this is airing, um, it won't be the same. <laughs> by the time, true, true. Um, and there's and there's often a couple. 
Um, but I would say lately, like, say, you know, thinking the past week or two, what has been um, hitting me, if you will, the most is this um, this darn touring thing. Mm-hmm. Touring, grain-free foods, what foods to feed, mm-hmm. um, and the fact that, in my opinion, people are missing the issue. Grain-free mm-hmm. is not evil. Great. There's nothing wrong with grain free. There is something wrong with a lot of the protein in the food coming from plants because those proteins, those plant proteins are not necessarily made up of the amino acids that the dog actually needs. Mm-hmm. And just to back up for the folks who might not be familiar with this, we're talking about the taurine related dilated cardiomyopathy that's happening in golden retrievers and other breeds right now. Uh, much of the research is coming out of UC Davis's Veterinary College. Uh, there is there are two excellent Facebook groups that are putting together owner submitted data on taurine levels and cardiac testing results. They've got to have close to a thousand dogs in the database now. If you are on Facebook and you punch in taurine deficiency golden retriever, those groups will come right up. Um, but my take is, and call me a conspiracy theorist, theorist if you like, the big pet food companies are manipulating this circumstance. And what you're seeing it from the media is don't feed grain-free foods, don't feed quote-unquote small or boutique. And they're actually now throwing the word inexperienced food companies. Don't feed their products. Feed the big three. Feed Hills, uh, Hills Science Diet, Feed Purina, Feed Royal Canaan. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, the experts in food nutri- in pet nutrition, dog nutrition in this case, are available for hire. Any company can hire them. Any company is capable of producing a good food if they uh, source their ingredients properly, have a good formulator, and use a good company. Mm-hmm. And they're slamming these little companies, or not so little companies. But they're slamming Blue Buffalo. How many people out there feed Blue Buffalo? It's probably the most commonly fed food in my animal in my small animal practice. Mm-hmm. Um, and every article you read right now says to feed the big three and to feed grains, which we know the dog has no requirement for grains. Right. The dog has no requirement for carbohydrates. So all of these ingredients that are in the food, whether it be containing grains or not, are biologically inappropriate and unnecessary. The only reason they're in there is to make it into kibble mm-hmm. and to sell you product. Mm-hmm. So that's my that's my current soapbox. I like it though. I and like it. Feed fresh food. You know, it it all comes down to biology. It's not about selling you stuff. It's not about selling you supplements. It's not about raw or cooked about feeding food that is appropriate to the species biology whatever species you're talking about and you know i i I do see people come in a lot and who are very much anti-raw who are like no way i'm not doing that and you know there there is some good grain free out there i'm not i mean Mm -hmm. if if you're not going to go raw then there's got to be an alternative to raw all right, I'm willing to to have that discussion. Grain free is fine. Fine, read the ingredients, but don't just trust that. Well, well, and if I can stop you right there, you said read the ingredients. <laughs> there is a board. There is a board certified veterinary nutritionist from Tufts who says to owners in her article, "Don't read the ingredients. You can't tell anything from it." And I guess it would be my inference that basically she's telling the pet owner, you're too stupid to know what you're feeding your dog. You need to trust the big three. And I'm sorry, that that speaks to me of is somebody paying you? Where does your bias come from? Because I like to think my owners are intelligent. They might not know all the tips or all the tricks that the pet food industry uses, such as splitting to make meat appear as the first ingredient. 
but they can read and say, I can't pronounce this. I don't know what it is. Or, my God, there are four kinds of peas in the first five <laughs> ingredients. My owners can tell that. Hello? Yes. And you're insulting them and, you know, telling them, oh, you have to buy from this big company. And yep. then, and here we go. You got me, you got me going. I, I am um, good and at then that. They get onto this, <laughs> you are. Then they get onto this feeding trial bit. They say you must see the food that is underground undergone an ASCO feeding trial. <sighs> Do you know what an ASCO feeding trial entails? Uh, no, thankfully I don't know it in what, depth. What would, what would be your guess? What would be your guess? Whatever, and my guess, and it and, and may be a little bit biased, but my guess would be whatever the top three have arranged as being <laughs> quote unquote what they say is is the standard. They may they may that may be true. I do not know. I don't either so about guessing. Feeding trial requires you feed the food. Um, you know, let's say, you know, brand X dog maintenance formula. We're gonna feed that. You have to start with eight dogs. You have to feed that food exclusively for six months. Six of the dogs must still be alive at the end of the trial. Oh, God. And he will do some very basic blood work, not even a full, what we would call a complete blood counter, CBC, and chemistry or organ profile. They do an abbreviated blood count periodically. That's the feeding trial. Oh, God. That's not a gold standard. And yet all of these, um, the, the board of nutritionists, the recommendations coming out of UC Davis, you must feed a food that has had a feeding trial. Let's face it, every college student has proved that you can live on hot dogs and ramen noodles for six months or yes. longer. A little bit of coffee, a little bit of alcohol. Mm -hmm. A lot of alcohol. A lot of alcohol, depending yeah. On age, depending on your age. <laughs> but six months is nothing. There's actually an old study that was done. A dog was denied food for 144 days and lived, had access to water. So you can eat nothing for 144 days and still survive. So these ASCO feeding trials are meaningless to me. And I don't think that the magic three are all of a sudden saying, oh, well, ASCO says we must start with eight dogs. Let's start with 800. Why would they? Mm -mm. No. Why, why have the expense? Oh, boy. And are those dogs, are those dogs living in a typical home environment? No. They're not living in somebody's home, having the stresses of the home, having the exercise and lifestyle, having other medications and vaccinations and treatments going on, getting slips from table food. I mean, it's totally, a totally different eating the treats that a pet home might feed, good or bad. It's totally non-relevant to everyday life. But yet it is held up by these folks as a gold standard. Yeah, I thought the gold standard was good. <laughs> One would hope. Yeah. But, I mean, to me it's like the, I don't know, the zinc standard or something. <laughs> it's um, very close. I'll have to, I'll have the to lead. The, what's the, the lead standard. That's yes. Good. I'm gonna use that. <laughs> the lead standard. We're going to um, get to that. It's the lead standard. Yeah. Boy, it's 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 so funny. You know, I get what was it? It was it wasn't AFCO. It was uh, PFI actually. Um, I had sure. their I had them on, and I did it as as I it wasn't my choice. Um, it was something that was uh, brought mm -hmm. to me by actually Cole sure. Cole Harrington was the one who who wanted sure. me to do it, and and I had their their person on, and she blatantly came mm -hmm. out and said it. Don't read the ingredients. Mm -hmm. Just trust us. What? Yeah. And, really? <laughs> you know that's you know that's like the old joke of trust me, I'm a doctor. <laughs> um, well, I play one on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. But you know, veterinary medicine is the only profession, and this is Karen Becker's quote. I can't take credit for it. That advises feeding a completely processed food diet. Every day, every meal. You know, human medicine doesn't do that. They tell us eat our veggies. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, it's crazy. But we as veterinarians that are not on our path or in our circle <laughs> say, oh, yeah, feed this stuff from a bag. Hmm. Um, we know from the uh, renowned veterinarian uh, formulating expert, Steve Brown, that fat and kibble go rampant in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So you buy that 30-pound bag of food. The first mistake people make is dumping it out of the bag and into a plastic bin and throwing out the bag so they don't have the lot number or expiration date. Um, and then it's exposed. you've exposed every kibble in there to air. So that fat is going rancid. Mm -hmm. Most people don't realize that spraying on fat is the last step of kibble manufacture. So in two weeks, you're now feeding stuff that's spoiled. Mm -hmm. And if you have one little dog and you've bought the giant economy size, by the end of the bag, the fat content is too low. There's spoiled products in there. The protein is degraded. What are you doing for your dog? It's crazy. And you know what? I'm even gonna I'm gonna plug this even better because Walmart has a 50 pound bag of Old Roy for only 19.99. Do they make Do they still make 50 pound bags? Yes. I always find it funny. That's my daughter incredible. My daughter will be walking through Walmart and she just just to just to have fun with me. She'll just jump up and sit on a big pile of those and go, "Look, Dad, look what I'm sitting on." Oh, it's yeah. like a big pile of ish to me, but you know, hey, whatever, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. 20 yeah. bucks, 50 pounds. Let's open that bag up, put yeah. it in the plastic and, bin. And you know, you know that they're making a profit on that and the, the co-packer or manufacturer of the food is making a profit on it. Mm -hmm. So what do you think the quality of ingredients in there is? Oh, it has to be, it has to be the best, the best of the best, right? Gold standard. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. You know, B, I was going to wait. Real. I was going to wait to talk about Blanc, but since we're, we're really, you know, knocking around on the wonders of this whole thing, you had a couple blog posts that, of course, oh. it, you know, I just, I, I, I yeah. do, I do read your stuff. I do enjoy everything, which is, you know, yeah. one of those things, just because I know you doesn't mean I don't, you know, follow what you do all the time. Right. So right. I love, can, can <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't say this with a straight face. And, um, Kibble, stop your dog seizures. I I read that yeah. tagline and I just was like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. And that and that blog post was written in response to um, a veterinary advertisement. You know, you have to understand. Every day I go to my mailbox. And I get my assortment of junk mail like everyone. But there are, there are probably six or seven veterinary uh, journals or magazines, which I receive. Um, the journals have, you know, actual research articles with references and such. And the magazines have a variety of stuff. But the magazines always have ads. And there was an ad for Purina's. Uh, formula called NeuroCare. Oh yeah. Which coincidentally, and I I give Rodney a bit of credit for this. It came out shortly after Rodney started pushing keto diet. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, Rodney, you've inspired pet food, perhaps. But you know, we've known in human medicine, and specifically in childhood epilepsy, that a ketogenic diet, a diet that is ultra low carb moderate protein, high fat, can reduce seizures. Mm -hmm. And, of course, in children, we don't want to put them on heavy-duty drugs. You know, they might be eight years old. You know, we don't want to take any chance on harming their body. So these diets were investigated, and they work. And the Keto Pet Animal Sanctuary has proven their merit in dogs, specifically, uh, for seizures and for cancer. So it's out there. So Purina says, okay, well, let's make a ketogenic kibble. Well, guess what? You need 40% carbs to make kibble, and low-carb recipes are like 5% carbs. So right away, it's pretty much impossible. But they decided to make this claim based on their addition of medium-chain triglyceride or coconut oils, that they were bumping up the fat so high. Um, I can't see how a dog eating this food eating 40% carbs would ever go into a ketogenic state. 
Mm-mm. But they got some study that they did internally to make this claim. It's ludicrous. And why in the world would you pay them, you know, four dollars a pound for this? Well, you can go to the grocery store and buy the ingredients, and Keto Pet Sanctuary gives the recipe away for free. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's insane. It's insane. And, you know, I've had seizure dogs on this diet, and it works. It's it amazing. Does. You know, it's funny because I noticed um, – one little thing that really caught my attention with Rodney is Rodney started really spending a lot of time with Daniel Orega, who is part of Keto mm-hmm. Pet. And I noticed right. that the more that they spent time together, the more Rodney was influenced by it. And if you notice, mm-hmm. in a lot of times, it's there's now the, the, the three right there. There's Dr. Becker, well, Rodney, yeah. and Orega. And... Well, I always, and Daniel, Daniel is part of Planet Cause now. Yeah, and and he's been part of he's been he's been really part of doing things with them for a while now. Oh, so, yeah. and so a completely inspirational kind of guy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, just and incredibly knowledgeable. Oh my gosh, he's brilliant. It, he puts he makes me every time I talk to him, I have to be ten steps ahead of myself, whether mm-hmm. it, I want to be or not, and then I have to be ten steps ahead of that because he just right. drops stuff. I mean, you've you've I know you've had conversations with him. He challenges you, and you're just like, oh boy, yeah, I. I with the yeah. first time we talked, the next day he starts flooding my email with all these these yeah. videos, and I'm sitting there yep. watching them. And it was a Saturday morning. I remember thinking I yeah. could be watching mindless TV. No, I'm watching keynote speakers talk about keto diet. I'm right. talking about all different right. things, and and I'm thinking probably halfway through these videos, I'm like. It just seems above my pay grade, but I can't stop watching it. And then thinking, as I start mm-hmm. to see him and Rodney really spend a lot of time, I'm like, oh, he's doing right. the same with him. I know he's because he because he yeah. makes your brain want more and hungry. Right. So right. not a surprise well, at all. And that's and that's the nature of you know the people who are natural teachers mm-hmm. and researchers and and passionate about what they do. Mm-hmm. And he's great at it. Really? He's great at it. Oh, he's very good. And I, I, that's what makes me laugh, though. And we, we were talking about before we started recording, and that was, wait, kibble and seizures, they mm-hmm. are linked. It's not a preventative. Mm-hmm. It's an actual crisis. So I thought it that was. can be, yeah. I was like, wait a second. Yeah. And then, of course, the but, next, but yeah. the next one, which I loved, again, you know, here, here's your starches that are, are loaded in, in all of these big pet food bags. Peas and potatoes and taurine. Oh my. And I just, oh my yeah. was my favorite yeah. part. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> I was just laughing yeah. at that. Yeah. But, but, you know, this is, and, and I would refer back to Susan Thixton's blog about the evolution of the grain free. Mm-hmm. When, um, and I always think of Origin as one of the first grain freeze out there. And that's just maybe my perception from my my region geographically. Um, initially, it was like white potatoes or sweet potatoes was the starch. And this is a great blog where she's got labels from over the years. And you can see where the formula was very simple initially in terms of the meats and the starches and some vegetable to where it is today, where it's, you know, pea protein isolate, lentils, chickpea, this, pea protein, pea fiber. The the formulas have become much more complex and much more um, containing of processed legumes, meaning the peas and beans, Mm -hmm. um, or fractions of them. Compared to when it used to be, oh, okay, this is, you know, beef and whatever, liver, beef liver, and, oh, okay, there's sweet potatoes. Uh, it's a totally different grain-free than it started out being. And we've lost, we, you know, the consumer doesn't notice that because 
they don't read the ingredients and maybe they read them initially, but then they're just buying the red bag. <laughs> and the bags never change. No. But the ingredients can always change and the sourcing can change. Mm-hmm. And ingredients and sourcing are really the big two factors for me for food. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's the food I'm making for my own dogs or what's going in a kibble. You know, I know there's a difference between when I go to my organic sources, when I go to my grocery store sources, when I go to my small butcher, you know, meat processor sources. And I can see the difference in the products. But once it's ground up into that little and made into that little brown nugget, you can't <laughs> tell. Brown nugget. You know, as as <laughs> as you said that, I'm just like, you know what? It is a brown nugget, but it, but it is an actual brown nugget. But in a metaphor stage, a you know brown nugget. You know, I'm thinking, uh-huh, I get where you're going. Oh wait, yeah, you, yeah. you actually meant that literally. It is a brown nugget, unless you have the ones that are nice, pretty, colorful dyes that are in there. Right. Which those, yeah. yeah. Oh well, my God! And let's let's talk about Petco. Let's <laughs> talk about Petco. Go. Um, Petco has just recently made an announcement that they are not going to carry, I don't know if they said products or food um, it, that contain the artificial ingredients. You know, I all I know is it says they're banning artificial ingredients in pet food yeah. is what the, the okay. is what they're, so, they're saying. So then, and the, the reason I make the distinction is pet food versus pet treats. Mm-hmm. So, you know, let's say the Christmas rawhides that are red and green, are they oh. going to carry them? Um. But even if we just say pet food, now, on the surface, that seems like a really cool thing and a positive step towards upping the quality of their offerings. But to find natural, we can't define natural anymore or define artificial. Yeah. I, I, you know, if it, if it says natural flavor, what does that mean? I mean, yeah. we still have undefinable ingredients going in. And does that mean they're going to get rid of kibble? Hell no. No. Um, Not like they're going to turn into a a store that contains only species appropriate fresh foods of human quality. No. And, And it doesn't mean that they're going to contain anything of human quality, which is for me a huge issue. I I'm wondering though, do you think this is just a way of getting into the press, getting out there as okay, we we have to Is it, is it our marketing? Yeah. Very well because it's and, like pet smart's yeah, beating I them. I don't criticize them. I don't criticize them for that because hey, they've got to they've got a market. They've got right. to get customers in their store. And the pet food that store trade is incredibly competitive. Mm-hmm. And we have, you know, we have PetSmart, we have Petco. Is there another big chain? There is. Uh, an, I'm, Plus. Plus. Yeah, we don't Plus, have. Plus, which I have. I, I'm, I have I'm, my, uh, I'm still thinking, you know, you have Costco, you have Sam's Club. They're carrying that stuff right, as well. Beyond that. Um, so so you've got, uh, you, we yeah. We have Tractor Supply. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so yeah, I can buy the, I can buy the, you know, the Kirkland food or whatever at Costco or mm-hmm. this at Tractor Supply. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of competition and that's not even considering the online sources. And oh, yeah. I mean, I confess I'm an online shopper. Mm-hmm. I love clicking on Amazon and having the stuff show up on my doorstep a day later. Mm-hmm. Um, it's but a, it's do a I drug. There? No. <laughs> It's a drug. <laughs> it really yeah. is. Yeah. Oh my gosh! When you get a good deal on Amazon and then it, you're tracking it on your phone, going, "I've got something coming!" Oh my gosh! It's the greatest feeling in the world. I'll, yeah. I'll do that any day yeah. or anything. And, <laughs> oh yeah, and for me, I'll buy an ebook there. It's like hit that hit that button, and it's delivered to my iPad instantly. Right. Like great! I've got my I've got my fix. I'm happy. That's how I am um, with movies, do with I, DVDs. Do I, do I feel bad about my local bookstore? Yes, I do. 
Um, I have a wonderful local bookstore that's privately owned, and they actually, the, the company also owns a small book publishing company called Troy Bookmakers. And they're just, they're great people. They own two bookstores. I try to go in there and shop at their bookstore whenever I can. Because it's like, I want to support you guys. I love Amazon, but I want to support you guys too. See, I never buy any ebooks. I have to physically be able to touch them. I, that's my mm-hmm. one thing. Uh, now my movies, my DVDs, I don't buy DVDs anymore because sure. I can't stand the clutter. I buy it off a of digital and I spend practically nothing. So, yeah. I, and it's instantaneous. Yeah. So I, I, but a yeah. book, yeah, I, I have to touch a book. I love yeah. the touch. I like the smell of a book. For some things, yes. For some things, I like the magic of holding it in your hand. Yeah. For my veterinary references, I love mm. having a digital version. Yeah. Because then I just take my iPad and wherever I go, I've got the whole library, mm-hmm. which I, I can't carry with me. Um, but the, the yeah. Petco thing, I think, I think it's, there's a percentage of it that's marketing. There's a percentage of it that's BS. And maybe there's a small percentage that is a step in the right direction. And I just, I worry that the consumer is not going to know the difference. Mm-hmm. And they're not going to make better choices for their dogs by going to Petco versus going to one of the other competitors. Well, I think you you because hit, the same the same products are going to be there. They are, and what really caught me is you you said something I didn't even think about. Which, of course, you know you do that all the time. So I always have to stay ahead of the game. But you you had mentioned treats, and I'm like, oh wow, wait, whoa, 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 you're right. I bet treats are not on that list of quote unquote right. pet food. Right. Well, and then... I mean, think of the rawhides, the jerky mm-hmm. treats, the flavorings. I mean, my one of my favorite videos of all time in the pet world is Rodney's rawhide treat video, <laughs> where he shows how rawhide. And it's funny too. If you You're... haven't searched this out, do it. My my favorite Tim eating dog food, but that's just me. I, I found that to be very funny. <laughs> yeah, the, the rawhide, where you know that is the actual process by which leather is processed, mm-hmm. and the leather that is used in you know garments and bags and stuff um, is taken off the top, and the rest becomes rawhide. Mm-hmm. But then the chemicals that it's treated with. And then they add flavoring additives and coloring to make it appealing to the consumers. And as we know, you know, Christmas is coming. It's going to be red and green. St. Patrick's Day, it's going to be green. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, these are not natural things. And let's face it, the dog doesn't see them. (laughs) It's all for the consumer benefit. Yeah. Is the dog going to chew it whether it's flavored or not? Potentially. Is, um, you know, I had... Oh God! It had to be two years ago. I had I had a dog that had never had a bully stick before. Be given one. The owner was driving back from a dog show, and he bit off a chunk and swallowed it, and it very nicely lodged in the dog's intestine. Mm-hmm. And eighteen hundred dollars later, I had removed it. You know, um, these things are not good for dogs. Mm-hmm. I am very opposed to the use of bully sticks, rawhides. Pig ears, cow noses, anything of that ilk, mm-hmm. um, because the potential for obstruction, the processing, the chemicals, just the the gross factor. <laughs> the gross factor, I love it. Well, we're talking the about the lead factor. standard, though. We're talking lead standard, so let's let's exactly. got to remember it, it, it's a five star on the lead standard. Sure. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny. I will, people will say, well, what do you do for treats? What do you feed? And I I'll Say it well, and I think we had this conversation. And I said, "I'll, I'll give him a, a, a chicken foot." Oh, you cook it? No, give him a no, chicken foot. No, they'll, no. they'll have fun with it. They'll enjoy it. Well, and I guess, I guess, um, in terms of treats, I have to pin down what am I giving the treat for? Yeah, right. So, like for my training treat, I might choose to use a very small dog biscuit. I will roll out ground meat and make my own Mm -hmm. uh, meat jerky, whether it's ground beef, ground turkey, ground pork, I've done them all. 
whether I'll use cheese as a train treat. String cheese works really nicely. Um, and then there's what I call the recreational bone, which my dogs are getting tomorrow in honor of Thanksgiving, <laughs> uh, which is a beef rib. And I, I shop at a restaurant supply house, and there are beautiful beef ribs that are 8 or 10 inches long with some meat on them. And I splurge, and you guys are getting beef ribs. Nice. So, and I, and I supervise their chewing, of course. When it gets too small, I take it away. Mm-hmm. But they're getting meat. They're getting connective tissue. They're getting a natural source of glucosamine. Mm-hmm. They're getting the enjoyment of chewing and the benefit of dental health. They're getting some bones, some natural calcium and phosphorus. And, you know, that's their recreational treat. Oh, yeah. And see, a chicken foot, you don't get that unless, you know, it's a special, it's not an everyday type thing. But right. to me, I always go, okay, you got the bone, you got the nail, you got the actual foot itself, you got right. the, the meat. It's a good little source and a little bit less, especially for an Akita. You don't have to worry about the choking hazard as much. Right. So that's another yeah, thing I, I always go with. The Akita would pretty much swallow it. They they actually chew. They enjoy they chewing on it. Them? Yeah, yeah. Both male and female, they love to chew on it. They, oh, it's it's one of their little little healthy little moments. And again, you don't do yeah. it all the time, but it has to be a special occasion. Right. Or like you mentioned, but you then, know, a recreational dog. But then yeah. I think of the people who, you know, you give a treat when the dog goes outside. Okay, that's absolutely fine. But they're giving like a pepperoni or something that. Looks like Play-Doh is, <laughs> is, you know, processed, whatever, contains sugar and glycerin and, you know, propylene glycol and rice isolate, mm-hmm. you know, not stuff that is healthy. Mm-mm. So I, you know, I kind of look at treats as I want them to be healthy. And and I do feed small dog biscuits, um, very small. I tend I tend to go to Old Mother Hubbard, but there are many other brands. Um, and there's weed in there, yes, but my dogs aren't getting that many of them. Right. And they're not getting them every day. Well, yeah, everything's but okay in my, moderation. Most of my treats are, exactly. Most of my treats are whole foods. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing what you can do. Even if you just cook up a chicken breast and cube it, uh-huh. and throw it in your freezer and pull a couple cubes out, they melt in your hands. Mm-hmm. And then you give it a, a special treat, which is tasty. And it's been healthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, Steve, we'll, we'll boil up chicken or, or do something like that, and it'll be a, a training treat. So I'm, I totally get mm-hmm. that. Um, now, of course, Thanksgiving, that, that lovely uh, prize that comes with every turkey, which is the neck and all the yeah. organs. I always say sure. to all our friends, are always like, hey, do you want it? Of course I do. It's like a Happy Meal toy to my dogs. They're going right, to have fun. Right. <laughs> so it's, well, and yeah. I'm glad you said that because, you know, all those organs that are stuffed inside the bird, whether it be a turkey or a chicken, mm-hmm. those are nutrient-rich, tasty, yes. desirable um, foods for your dog. Mm-hmm. I mean, Do you, you want to you give me the innards from your bird? Thank mm-hmm. you very much. Right? I'm always like, why are you throwing that away? That is so valuable. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to eat that. I'm not talking about eating it yourself. Your dog will love right. you. Why? Yeah. And, why would I do and, that? You know, people <laughs> people certainly make gravy from it. Which yes. Is great. Go for it. Go for it. Um, but even cooks beyond the neck with the bones in, if you cook that, don't feed it. Oh. But the other organ meats, yeah, throw them in the bowl. Mm-hmm. I mean, you and I grew up where the dogs got the leftovers scraped in their bowl. Mm-hmm. And truthfully, I think that's why my childhood dogs were healthier than dogs when I was a young adult. Because mm-hmm. every day they did get some whole food. They mm-hmm. did get some vegetable matter. And a lot of the hot research right now is on the intestinal microflora, the microbiome mm-hmm. in the dog's intestinal tract. And that, that, population of bacteria benefits so much from variety in food and variety in fiber and vegetables. So, you know, you're making asparagus. Oh, don't feed romaine lettuce right now. Right. Um, 
Like we're worried, we're worried about dog food killing people, raw dog food, but don't feed romaine lettuce. Mm-hmm. Or don't eat romaine lettuce. Or um, Jenny O, uh, oh. the, the turkey, um, it's, it's the tur, not, not paste, but yeah, you know, it's, the Jenny O was also a recall as well. Oh, was it? Yes. I mean, I've just seen the romaine thing everywhere yes. and I'm thinking, you know, this is this is really sad when we have to worry about lettuce killing people. Right. Or sickening people. I thought the same and thing. And yet, yet FDA is going to shut down Radcap with E. coli. <laughs> Which is exactly the segue that I was hoping you were going to do. <laughs> I know, I knew, but I was, you know, you're that. I just follow your lead. That's that's how we are at this point. <laughs> <laughs> the lead standard. No, yeah. this is actually the gold standard. But but no, well, you know, we alternate. Hey, <laughs> we alternate. We go from lead to gold. Um, but yeah, the the rad cat. Now, you know, again, this is an interesting hot topic, and mm-hmm. I find that as time is going on. A lot is still coming out. A lot of things that you, sure. you kind of, you know, get to read and stuff like that. You get to see their statements from Radcat. You get to see the different parts mm-hmm. to it. But let's get down to that, that meat and potatoes. Yeah, no pun intended. Uh, but let's get down to <laughs> that, to that part of, you know, the question mark. And I had the same con- conversation as I told you with Susan. And I know you did too. And that is what really happened. Yeah. And that's. That's the thing that we don't know. Radcat made one of the, and, and I'm confess, I'm primarily, I primarily deal with dogs, especially mm-hmm. in the raw food world. Um, I, I certainly take care of cats, but cats in raw, a lot of cats don't like raw food. Right. A lot of cats don't like canned food. They get hooked on the kibble, but Radcat seemed to have one of the widest acceptance rates by cats for their product. And it seems they made a really high quality raw cat food. And FDA for some reason tested their food and found it was contaminated with bacteria. Um, Rad cat, as I understand the situation, had reserved samples from every lot and they tested their food and found, at an independent lab and found it clean. Uh, per Susan Sixton, there were allegations of uh, the, I think it was the Colorado State Department of Agriculture. I think Colorado, I think they, I remember there was two. And if I'm not mistaken, it was Cleveland was one and Colorado mm-hmm. was the other one. And they, okay. they asked for a sample from the Cleveland one, which they were denied. Okay. And then they asked right. for a sample from Colorado, which they were given it, but it came back inconclusive, if I'm not mistaken, to the yeah. terms. But, and, the, but yeah. the, the problem was, this is a frozen food. Right. And as I understand it, the, the inspector who came and got the food did not keep it frozen upon transport to the lab. Mm-hmm. Now, that would be like us going to the grocery store, buying some fresh meat. Mm-hmm. on an August day and saying, okay, well, it can just sit in the car while I drive two hours. Mm-hmm. Like, no, you're not maintaining the integrity of the product. And then, surprise, surprise, you have bacteria there. Well, you didn't handle it as the manufacturer told you to. So is that the manufacturer's fault? Um, you know, it's it's a crazy situation and I don't think we have all the details of what happened Mm -mm. and what didn't happen. But, you know, for a company to, the company has since been shut down because basically they couldn't pay their bills Mm -hmm. because everybody they had shipped food to said, oh, well, we're shipping it back to you. We're not paying for it because you have an FDA recall. Right. Yeah, that Um, happened after the first one. For a small company, that's, that's decimating. Right. Um, it's it's insane. Yeah, and, and you know, the, did the did the product pose a danger to cats? I don't think so. Right, cats like dogs have a very acidic stomach, mm-hmm. and they're designed to handle this. I mean, they're designed to go out and kill a mouse and eat it. Mm-hmm. Did it pose a danger to people? Well, I guess if the people decided to eat the food, yes. 
Oh, because if people didn't wash their hands after handling the food, maybe. But, you know, we handle contaminated meats all the time. It's called chicken. Yeah. You know, we go to the grocery store. There is a tolerable, tolerable amount of bacteria on a roast chicken that you buy for your own family. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it kind of seems like a little bit of a witch hunt on the raw companies. But it's a really unfortunate thing because the one thing I know about Radcat is cats liked it. Yes. And that's a huge asset to the cat world. It and was a blow. Yeah. It was definitely a blow to the it's cat industry. Yeah. And, and honestly, when you think about it, besides Radcat, I don't know of a company that was at that level that was just predominantly for cats, had their own Mm-hmm. kind of raw food type mixture there wasn't anybody right. so it, no. it it lends the question of they were they they were the only yeah. ones yeah but it just lends they the were question the were they were they picked off by big pet food in and, and again a I conversation i've had i've had this conversation privately amongst the industry and it's like mm-hmm. does it seem like either they were picked off because they were getting too big or did they just go the wrong direction, piss off the wrong person, and that's what got the oh, everything? Yeah. So, it I mean, it, it hard, has happened. It's hard to say. Right. It's hard to say. And, um, and the, the lack of com, uh, com, uh, communication by them of coming out public and, and saying something has been a little bit... Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to say disconcerting. We'd love for them to share. Yeah. But I completely understand. I mean, there's, there was a GoFundMe organized by mm. one of their followers that's raised over $24,000. Yeah, but they needed one point something. Yeah. Yeah, what did they, they need? A million dollars. Yeah, it was like 1.2, 1. 1. 1.5, something like that. So that doesn't yeah. even put a dent into it. So that's the no. sad part no, when I it mean, comes but to it. It's a. It's a nice supporting gesture by their people. Yeah. To my knowledge, they were the only, they're the only really dedicated cat brand. The next best, um, cat food or raw food that cats seem to like in my experience was primal. Yeah. And cats would eat primal. But again, they went to high pressure pasteurizing, so they're not raw. Mm-hmm. I mean, red cats filled a unique niche. Now, might they be, not talking because of things going on behind the scenes, some sort of reorganization. I don't know. I, I don't know. But it's upsetting to me if a raw company was targeted. Yeah. Because let's face it, Kibble has committed many, many worse sins. And nobody seems to be concerned about that. But isn't that, um, isn't that society yeah, now? That is it society. Is. It it's is. definitely society. I, I believe in one side, but the other side I'll give, you know, of complete marks against could be the same thing. And it doesn't matter. I mean, honestly, it could be a celebrity in, in music, sure. movies, politics. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. If I believe in this person, but I don't believe in that person, if they do the same thing as, as right. A, I'm still going to judge B because I don't like them. It's, it's, I think sure. that's what what this is too. It I think there's I think there's an element of that absolutely. But the difference is now we're talking about what's better for the cat. Right. And we're talking about the health of the animal, lowering the disease risk, and we know from even conventional medicine from the American College of Veterinary Internal Medicine, a traditional body that dry food is not good for cats. No. And it contributes to obesity, diabetes, and kidney disease. Mm-hmm. Now we have a raw food that actually is more biologically appropriate, and it gets shut down. So, you know, yeah, I get the celebrity thing and all, you know, that, that analogy. But there's no harm to the celebrity being judged <laughs> that's on par with, the cat's getting diabetes or kidney disease. Right. No, I get that. I, I, I totally agree. Um, I mean, it's it's funny because none of those, and, and this is according to Big Pet Food, none of those mm-hmm. are attributed to the food. 
it's attributed to the lifestyle. So their food doesn't have, does not cause any of these problems. Obesity? No, that's because you don't exercise your cat. Uh, diabetes? Well, no, but, it's, you know, <laughs> it's, it's funny. Diabetes because you're, because you're feeding an obligate carnivore a diet of 50% sugar. <laughs> that doesn't compete to diabetes. Come no, on. no, okay, no. Honey, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's be, let's be real. Let's be real. Uh, and, you know, and this is, this is why I'm glad to be a dog practitioner and not a cat practitioner. Mm. Um, in many, in many situations, the cat is better off being a strictly indoor cat. Mm -hmm. That does not in any way allow the cat to meet their natural exercise needs. But if it's not freaking safe for them to be outside, what are you going to do? You know, whether it's cars, coyotes, or you live in the city, your cat has to be an indoor cat. Yeah. How are you going to give them a couple miles of exercise every day? Well, you've been down to exercise in their minds. I mean, how many? And, <laughs> and, and I, I'm putting this out there for everybody listening with cats. How many, yeah. you know, are out there right now, either at work, in the car, wherever they're at, and their cat is at home, probably on the couch sleeping and not exercising its mind? Most likely that's the case. And we're all and guilty of it in some ways. From one sunny patch to another. <laughs> yeah, or or out of the sunny patch, <laughs> depending on temperature. Or out of the right, right, <laughs> right. It's too much sun. I need to go away now. Um, and, yeah. And and so it's it's always a question: is your is your cat getting stimulated in its brain enough? And that's and that's a Which problem. Right. But also, but also pure physical activity, because if you ever get the opportunity to see outdoor cats. Mm -hmm. You know that fat pad that builds up between their hind legs? Uh-huh. In the indoor cat, it's not there in the outdoor cat. Well, that's because, because they run. Moving. Yeah, they move in, they're running, they they're run. jumping, yeah. They're they're covering a couple miles a day. Uh-huh. Can you imagine if if we and, ran that and much? During that time, <laughs> yeah, and during that time, they're not walking over to the food bowl where the dry food is out all the time and grazing. Mm-hmm. You know, they're outdoors. They might be chasing a chipmunk. They might be, even if they're just hanging out, they're not eating. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even an eight-hour fast has an impact on the biology of the cat. I, I just wish there so, was some yeah, science yeah. that would, you know, be able to combine humans and eating constantly yeah. with with obesity and everything else to how animals are. I wish there was different you know, documents well, you know, or videos. All, you know, we're an omnivore. Our digestive tract is different from, you know, the cat, different from the dog. We're all different. But it's but still... That's why I say species appropriate is the most important thing. Yes, yes. I just it's one of those things. It's like, well, if, you're, if your dog doesn't get outside, what do you think your, your dog is going to be? Lethargic, overweight, yeah. different problems. And it's yeah. only three. I mean, you've right. seen it. I know you've seen many, many young dogs that are, they have the body of a 15, 16 year old dog mm -hmm. who has been on kibble yeah. all its life. And it's like three. Yeah. Well, why is that? Oh, because yeah. the food yeah. and the non-exercise. And it's a dog, not even a cat. Right. So, but I the mean. The thing is, <laughs> even, even the couch potato dog gets taken outside to go to the bathroom. Yes. The cat has the bathroom delivered to them. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, even even the most um, sedentary lifestyle dog at least goes outside in the yard. True, true. And and even the semi sedentary gets walked around the block. The right. poor cat. You know, and and you know, I say this with respect to the fact that in many places it's not safe to let your cat out. Mm. Um, you know, and, and that, and keeping them indoors is the responsible choice. But it's not their nature. I mean, when you start looking at Washington National Geographic, let them tell you how far, you know, the cheetah ranges each day. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And a, a domestic cat would cover one to two miles a day in the real world. Which is still not that much. You would think it would be a lot more. Oddly enough. You, 
You might, you might. But, you know, when you think about their body size, what they need to catch, where it is, you know, compared to, say, a big cat in Africa, where yeah. you got to go to where the antelope are, you know, it's all proportional. But, still, you know, and I think of the barn cats when I worked in the horse barns at Cornell. I mean, they were not chubby. They didn't have a fat pad. Mm-mm. They were out in the barn, and the barns, you know, they slept in the heated office in the winter. But otherwise, they were out. They were trying to catch pigeons. They were doing stuff. They were at the upper barn. They were at the lower barn. They were all over the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's and kind of... they lived good, long lives. I think that the way that society is and with, you know, you've mentioned it, the dangers, it makes it hard to have an indoor-outdoor cat. A lot more, which mm-hmm. is going to sound odd, but... It's more dangerous now than when we were kids. And I don't really understand how it's so much more, you know, dangerous. Obviously, predators were always there. But for some reason, it's a little bit more dangerous now. Maybe because people don't pay attention when they're driving. So that's possible. But other than that, oh, and then, you know, toxic things that are in yards and different things, whether it's chemicals. So that's that's the Uh, difference. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, you know, I mean, as I think around. of my little dead end street was kind of a loop around my house, actually. And we have one indoor outdoor cat in the neighborhood. And it roams around and it catches birds with a bird feeder and it hangs out. <laughs> um, but, you know, most people who are going down this street are over the age of 70, except for me. Um, and they drive very slowly, so it's not a danger. Uh, and, you know, there's no predators here. So it's relatively safe. But other places, no. I mean, we have coyotes, we have cars, we have 40 and 50 mile an hour roads. It's not a good thing. It's weird. It's weird how just a matter of a very short time, the dangers of, a, of, just being outside have increased just because we have technology that has distracted us behind the wheel. And let's be realistic. Right. Not many people care if a squirrel is in the road. Now I'll stop for a squirrel. I'll stop and pick up a turtle in the middle of the road. I don't care. But most, most people are like, I don't care, whatever it's in my way. I'm going forward. Drives me nuts. Um, but then, you oh, know, <laughs> and, and, and during the, the hot weather, once it gets warm, you'll see turtles, and, and you'll see a lot of them yeah. just get run over. It's like, why would you do right. that? It's just ridiculous. Right. But then you think of the chemicals that, that are out there, and just this the craziness that, that life has changed the dynamics of just the simplicity of a front yard or a backyard. It's mm-hmm. all different. So weird. Well, and depending on where you are in suburbia to urban to true city, you know, you say front yard. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> my front yard is big, but some front yards are 20 feet uh-huh. or less. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you can't sit out there. Um, you know, it's, it's a changing world. Well, look at, look at some of the places yeah. in, in California. I mean, if you can have that's enough right. grass as one square patch, that's a, that's a pretty big front yard. It's almost right, impossible to right. see that. Thinking if I was a dog yeah. and I wanted grass, where would I go? Right, right. <laughs> well, exactly. you know, we have to hit this topic before we run out of time because, of course, sure. like always, we always end up leaving stuff behind. But this is a topic that we've never talked about, and I, I'm shocked. Oh, right. right? It was yeah. like, wait, we've never talked about it, and that is we've never gone there. Never gone there. CBD and hemp. Now. I, I know you've seen, I love, and I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of it, uh, from, for Katana, the oldest dog. She had hip right. and joint issues. And, and what are you going to do? So when we tried the, the CBD and hemp oil, it really, really put her back to life. Yeah. That and, and having puppies. That's another story. Um, yeah, that's another story. <laughs> that's a whole different story, which I was going to bring up in this one, but we'll wait for another time. But we'll, talk, we'll do that next time. We'll table that, yeah. yes. But the the thing is, is that majority, and, and I've, I've definitely had the conversation right here, is, okay, what is your take on it? And, you know, that's what I love about you is 
you'll tell me exactly what you think. So I'm just going to step yeah. away and say, go with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, CBD or cannabinoid, cannabinoid oils, whatever you want to call it, um, whether extracted from hemp or from the marijuana plant, um, I have found very effective for three things. Number one is osteoarthritis pain. Number two is seizures. Number three is anxiety. Mm-hmm. Now, it's really important to put it out there straight away. These are not going to get your dog high. The THC, the compound that produces the euphoric effect from marijuana, has been removed. So it's not, this is not a illegal drug, if you will. Mm-hmm. It's a plant extract, just like many other drugs are plant extracts. Cornell, my alma mater, twice over, actually did a great study on the effect of cannabinoids or CBD oil on osteoarthritis pain and came back with an incredibly positive result. And they used things like force plate analysis and gait analysis, as well as veterinarian exams and owner impressions to formulate this opinion. It's like, there's a university peer-reviewed study that says this stuff works. Mm-hmm. We need to consider this as a viable option for some of these issues. Um, some of the seizure research is very encouraging, and certainly the anxiety um, research is also encouraging. Mm-hmm. The thing I'm most concerned about with CBD is getting a good product, and because like anything that comes on the market and explodes, which CBD has. Uh, there are companies who are marketing a product that contains less than they state on the label mm-hmm. or that is less potent than is really needed. So you need to know your CBD. But it's been nothing short of amazing. It, and it is. I only have one case currently being treated uh, a cancer dog, a dog that had osteosarcoma, which is usually a six week to six month prognosis, mm. um, in his shoulder. His leg was amputated and he went, underwent some experimental therapies and he's now three years post amputation. <laughs> but he developed a soft tissue mass on his remaining forelimb which was addressed by the owner with CBD. Uh, She was reluctant to tell me that's what she did. But um, when it had decreased by half, by a factor of half, um, she brought him in and said, look at this, and told me what she'd done. Like, okay, I'm, I'm certainly becoming a believer. And a lot of the research says this will be effective for cancer. Mm Mm-hmm. Which it begs and the question: I've Why? Always, why now? Why hasn't it been? You know, we've known that this is well, actually think, something to work that's going to work in humans. Well, we know we know it does amazing things for chemotherapy patients. Mm-hmm. Nausea, um, and that you know that's marijuana that also contains THC. It does. Okay. And and you know, I do, how much do the cannabinoids? Cannabinoids help just straight CBD. I don't know. I mean, there's the stigma of this has been an illegal drug in our country. And certain states have legalized it. And, you know, everything's in turmoil right now. Um, For me, as a medical practitioner, I think I view it as let's step back and say, hey, we use herbs. We use medications from plants. We use penicillin, which was derived from a fungus. Mm-hmm. Why are we getting so bent out of shape about this mm-hmm. when it's just a product from a plant that we can extract, that we can control, and that benefits people? Mm-hmm. There are some amazing videos that circulate of Parkinson's disease patients that smoke marijuana and their tremors go away. I mean, imagine not being able to hold your cell phone and dial. And then taking, ingesting or smoking or however you, it was administered, a product and being able to do that. How would that change your life? Astronomically. If you're, astronomically, yeah. And 
I think we we need to find ways to make ourselves comfortable with the fact that okay, we thought this was a bad thing, but actually there's some good here. Mm-hmm. And and finding ways to use it and make it affordable for people. And it's not really expensive. I mean, you can get a good product for about forty dollars, and it, it they're the size of a little treat. Well, I'm I'm going beyond you to medical marijuana. Ah. Um, medical marijuana becomes pretty expensive. Okay. I'm okay. I see what you're, and I see where you're going with it. Okay. That makes sense. I'm going good. Yeah, okay. yeah. And CBD, and the thing with CBD is, yes, you can get a good product from $40 for $40, but how do you know it's a good product? What brands do you trust? Right. What right. Dosage, what dosage do you use for your dog's problem? I mean, there's a lot of things we need to really iron out, mm-hmm. but I'm very optimistic about what it offers. You know, it's based f- on you know, my owners that have used it and the research that has been done. It's funny because I I found out about it becoming really big almost two years ago, and I did my very mm-hmm. first interview with it. Which I I'm gonna be honest, I don't know much about marijuana. This may sound ridiculously okay. weird, but I never mm-hmm. have smoked it. I've never had edibles. Um, mm-hmm. I just never cared. So learning right. a little bit about, you know, what it can do. And I, I looked at it from the, the science side of it. I'm like, wait a second here. Mm-hmm. There's so much benefits and, and talking holistic. Okay. When we're talking about being holistic and want to get back to, you know, everything natural, why not? And, and it's, yeah. It, two years ago, you couldn't even get this stuff unless you had a uh, distiller uh, one of the the marijuana places you go into. Uh, what is it? Special, special license. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know what that's how that's how knowledgeable I am. Yeah. The dispensary type place. Um, you had to have a, a prescription, and or you had to be in a state that could sell it, and they, you mm-hmm. couldn't buy it from an, you know unless you were in that state. I mean, the regulations were ridiculously crazy, and now yeah. you can go on Amazon yeah. and get it. So that's that's a benefit. Yeah. yeah. Well, and when a traditional university like Cornell is willing to say, "Okay, we'll evaluate it," and they put those dogs on a force plate. I mean, a force plate tells you on each leg how many pounds of pressure is the dog putting on mm-hmm. each foot. And they show improvement post-treatment. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are hard and fast numbers. Mm-hmm. You know, if I have a bad leg I'm and I'm going to put 10% of my body weight on that leg and carry the other 90% on the other three legs, and then I go to, oh, I'm willing to put 40% on that leg, that's huge. Oh, yeah. I mean, that is, I want to say, incontrovertible. Um, you know, these things work. They do work. And, uh, and, yeah. why should, and why should we be surprised? Because, you know, most medicines originally came from plants. That's what shocked me. Isn't, is that, though, what every conversation has always been about, though, is let's take out all the chemicals and the artificial this and that, and let's go back to the original whether it's it's dogs eating right. food, it's cats, it's even down to mm-hmm. humans. And of course, let's let's right. take away even bringing in romaine lettuce as being an issue. What? Right. Why would it go? Why would we have a recall? It because we're we're tampering with something that's pure. Don't need right. to. Right. And that's what we've done right. forever, and we're doing it with medicine too. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, and the other thing with cannabinoids and CBD. You know, marijuana, whatever, is the different state laws. And as I understand it, in different states, some veterinarians are not even allowed to bring up the subject of yes. CBD because of the state laws banning that, which, you know, I think the laws are just outdated, mm-hmm. you know, because they're worried about the addictive properties of THC, mm-hmm. which they can't make the distinction by the way the law is written. That this is not THC. Mm-hmm. This is CBD. Um, it's crazy. You, you know, I, and, I, I. But you know, owners owners will find out about it whether we as veterinary professionals 
can bring it forward or not. And I, I feel for the vets that have to cover their butts and say, yeah. I want to talk to you about this. I'm legally not supposed to, but, you know, and, and try to find a way. I mean, that's got to be an awful position to be in. I would imagine so. I mean, I, I've had some say, you know, it's still a controlled substance and, and there's nothing we can do about it. We can't recommend it. It's like, but, right. but I would, you know, and, and I look at it from another standpoint. Again, you're talking to somebody who didn't ever smoke pot or do anything. Right. I've had alcohol and I'll tell you, if it was alcohol or marijuana that I had to have, well, let's see. Alcohol, I can have alcohol poisoning. I can do a lot of stupid things with that. Right. Marijuana, you can't overdose. Oh, sure. So it's like, uh, and, you know, what's the side effects of, and I'm not talking about marijuana that's that's been tainted. I'm talking about the pure state. Right. With THC, right. only thing that people are going to be is just loopy and, and hungry, where alcohol... Mm-hmm distorts everything they could be violent and who knows what oh sure so i mean the yeah. argument is yeah. okay if they're, you're they're both, they're both um let's call them psychoactive substances yes and they have very different effects i um, literally i, I did talk uh, to a police officer about the the issue of legalization and one of his concerns was if i have a driver who's pulled over for erratic driving I don't have a way to measure his mm. level of impairment with marijuana mm. like I do with alcohol. Right. And I get that. Um, you know, in a perfect world, we'd all be smart enough not to <laughs> drive impaired, but, you know, sadly we aren't. That is the but sad part. that has part. nothing to do with our dogs. That has nothing to do with our dogs. But we can go back to, you know, everything always starts with, as as humans, as the so-called smart ones, which, I mean... Right. Some of us, some of us are. I mean, there's one on this, on this conversation is the smart one and it's not me. Um, and you can look back on just the science of, uh, and evolution of people and you can put it all right. together. You know, we can, we can really look at our dogs and our cats and, and see where we've made mistakes and we mm-hmm. can, we can fix that by not going down the same road. But unfortunately, that's kind of where we are. And that's why I'm like, well, you know, obviously seizures can be, you know, combat with, uh, with dry kibble. That's what they're saying. So not CBD, (laughs) just go with kibble. Um, right. It's, it's just, it, the the most ironic and, and asinine things that are said as, as fact, it just, it, it appalls me. It's like, well, let's not use an herb to treat an actual condition, let's, let's put more kibble into it because that's exactly it's what could help. Product. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, well. Well, now, we're, we're on our last minutes, unfortunately. Okay. But, but I, and yeah. did this just go by faster than normal? Because it did feel like it did. Always it, it always does. Definitely, definitely. And, and, and this is why we can't do 30 minute shows. This is why. Yeah. I've tried. It just isn't going to work. <laughs> so, what have we not covered that honestly we should have covered? Um, I think we covered everything we planned to. Yeah, I think so. I just didn't know if I, if there was something that you wanted to toss in there that I didn't, you know. Yeah, no. I mean, uh, the expo is coming up. That's the only thing we talked about. Gene Dodds. We talked about Dr. Pope. Um. And Billy and my other wonderful speakers, Kimberly and Suzanne Clothier for the behavior aspect. Um, we talked about the new venue. Um, and yeah, you, you know, about it. I'm going to say before the expo, you'll be on. I'm going to go with. I'm going to say three. Yeah, I'm going to say three times before the expo, you'll be on. Jeez. Yeah, I know. I make me work. Well, you know what? Okay, let's be honest with everybody. So I'll be saying, I'll be saying, you know, I have to, I have an open spot, and you're like, well, what? what I'm, I'm here. What was it last week? We were talking about it. I was like, oh, I got two episodes to finish off the year. You're like, well, what about me? Right. I'm ready. I'm like, yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Let's yeah. let's. We, we can always, always talk. It's always a good time. Absolutely. Right. Well, right. and 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 you know what we need to do is we need to 
have a contest to predict the next big event in the pet health world. Oh, God, that would be almost impossible to call. I mean, it's a recall. Let, let's just call, let's go with a recall, but, but who? Or, or a sale, a recall or a sale? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, or sale. Yeah. It could be. It could be a sale. Bye-bye Origin, bye-bye anything that's good, bye-bye Radcat, anything yeah. that has a positive I mean, hit sad, on. Sadly, I'll make a prediction. I mean, I really thought Origin Acana Champion Pet Food was going to be sold to Purina. But after the touring thing with Acana being the top represented food in the database, mm-hmm. I don't know what's going to happen with that company. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't think they're going to be acquired or they're acquired at a very cheap cost. I still and, I still say Perina gets it, or if they haven't already, I, they might have already done it quietly, but at a low not, cost. Not really yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, certainly their value went down. Because when you join that touring responsive cardiomyopathy group on Facebook and you look at the spreadsheet with almost a thousand dogs there, mm. and then you see how many are eating each certain food, um, sadly those foods are, are overrepresented, shall we say? Mm. And those were foods I used to recommend. Right, right. That's the sad part. Anything I was state of the art. Right, and now they're all gone. Now we're all stuck. Well, yeah. as well, we're, we're not, you know, we're not stuck because there is always the fresh food option. There are loads of us available yes. to teach you how to do it, to hold your hands through it. There are loads of books, websites, resources. Um, if you want better for your pet, you can do it. But remember the lead standard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the lead standard well, says no. To, you just have to say, you know, why not? Right. I'm going to try this. Right. I agree. Well, I hate to say it, we have run to our end of our time, which, you know, this yeah. would this, this would have gone on for probably another three, four days, easily. Easily. <laughs> and you know I'm right. <laughs> well, well, I'm Chris Green. Have a pet-tastic week. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay, gotta go in my bedtime.